And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the most famous words in motorsports, the Grand Marshal of the First Plus Financial 200, Mr. Mike Shackford. Gentlemen, start your engines. With that command for the 35th consecutive year, the best stock car drivers from the Midwest will begin their ARCA season on the high banks here at Daytona International Speedway. After two months of waiting in a hectic week of wrenching, rubbing, testing, and tuning in the Florida sun, a full field of 40 ARCA cars is set to compete. As with any season opener, there's the new teams, sponsors, names, and places mixed with the old. Yes, those familiar faces shuffle together. They'll follow an all-rookie front row to the green flag coming up next. 40 different drivers, 40 different stories, but none more moving or emotional than that of 48-year-old Bill Baird. On Thursday, he won the pole for this race, but Friday, his world was shattered when he learned that his mother, Millie, had suffered a cerebral aneurysm. Baird flew home from the track to Kentucky to be with his family. Bill returned to Daytona Saturday afternoon. His mother has been removed from life support machines. She is not expected to survive. Bear told me early this morning his family encouraged him to race today. It's what his mother would want him to do. Millie Baird was to be here today to watch her son race for the very first time. Today, her son races to honor his mother. Kenny Irwin starts on the outside of the front row. He's raced in almost every division there is, and he's won in almost every division there is. This year, he moves up to Winston Cup racing with the Robert Yates team. They felt like he needed some experience running up front, running in the draft, getting behind, catching back up, hitting on pit road, all types of super speedway experience. Daytona, Talladega, restrictor plate racing is different. He's going to get some here today, and hopefully it'll help him in the 125 to reach his dream of making it to the 500 next Sunday. Since Wednesday, we have watched and listened as 21-year-old Billy Venturini has studied for his first race at Daytona. He was visibly relieved after his two laps of qualifying that landed him ninth. Then it was time to learn about the draft, Aerodynamics 101. Now the studying is over and the final exam is about to begin. His teacher has been his father, Bill Venturini, a master's degree in this division, two-time series champion. But all he can do today is watch how his star student handles the biggest test in ARCA, the one they simply call Daytona. Kyle, you know a little bit about that father-son deal, don't you? I definitely do, Bill. I came down here almost 20 years ago to a test in January. My father said, if you run fast enough, you can come back and race. There's not a more special memory in my memory than being here and having my father spot for me, talk to me on the radio, and guide me around this racetrack to victory. And I'm going to tell you something. When, when, when the Venturinis leave here today, it doesn't make any difference. Win, lose, or draw, they'll always remember Daytona. Special memories of Daytona. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Punch, along with two-time ARCA champion Benny Parsons and former ARCA media coordinator Ray Dunlap. We're certainly glad you could join us. Benny, you're the best guy to ask this question, too. What does rookie Kenny Irwin need to learn over the next 200 miles? He just needs to learn what it's like to race at Daytona with cars in front of you, behind you, beside of you. The intensity level in ARCA is about 10% of what it's going to be like next week in the Daytona 500. And what a great place to learn. ARCA is the best learning division there is in stock car racing right now. And Ray, aside from getting experience, this event is a landmark event for ARCA that will impact these drivers in this series throughout the year. Well, it absolutely is, Jerry. They've got three big races coming onto the schedule for the first time this year. They're going to go to Dallas, to Denver, and to Memphis. But none of that matters today because they're at Daytona, and this is the world center of racing. Now, there is a record purse for today's race, but all the tea in China can't buy you a win here. And no matter how many zeros are on the winner's check, what really matters is the winner gets to say, I've got the trophy, and I won at Daytona. ESPN presents Speed World. Today, we continue our coverage of Daytona Speed Weeks 1998 from the World Center of Racing. It's the 35th annual Arca Bondo Marhide Series First Plus Financial 200. 
huge crowd on hand under beautiful sunny skies here in Daytona Beach, Florida, and a field of 40 cars will start out of a record 73 entries. There's the folks that came to watch this 80 lap 200 mile event. Our Suzuki starting grid shows an all rookie front row. Yes, 48 year old Bill Baird. You heard the compelling story. Bill Weber talked about his mother. He is racing for her memory. And Kenny Irwin, the rookie alongside in the Robert Yates Ford. As we look at the rest of the field, all these fellas, you're right, Ray. Winning that Daytona is so doggone special. I did it in 1969, and as Kyle Fetty he did it in 1980. One of my fondest memories. And Benny, as we look back through the field, you notice the qualifying times. This field is tighter than any other field we've ever seen at Daytona. Just 11 miles an hour separating first to 36. We saw Billy Venturini, one of the second generation drivers we've been following all week long. And farther back in the field, we'll see Adam Larson, the young son of Wayne Larson. Adam, just 19 years of age from Iowa. His first super speedway race, his first major asphalt race of any sort. Right now, you're watching it along with his relatives and family back in Iowa at home. And ever see Kirk Chumberty, the mini the crew chief for Dale Earnhardt for many, many years. Mike Wallace is in the field, starting in 18th position. Everything he's got is borrowed. Borrowed the car, borrowed the engine, and he qualified 18th, thinks he's going to win today. 40 cars will start, 20 rows side by side. The largest purse in ARCA series history. Danny Pardis out of the Goodies Dash series ranks. Randall Ritter, that wild ride he took at Talladega a couple of years ago. There's a former Rookie of the Year, Glenn Brewer. Glad to have him back full time in 1998 on the ARCA series tour. From England is Neil Cunningham. And look there, Gary Layton in the number 74 car. He's one of the cars that I expect to come right to the front. They're a lot faster than how they qualify. And there's Adam Larson, what is 19 years old on the inside of row 17. All the way back to row 20, back starting back in row 20, a former NASCAR Winston Cup Rookie of the Year, David Boggs from Rock Hill, South Carolina. And we check in back in the pits with Bill Weber. Well, the pit board is out to show Billy Venturini where he will be stopping in this race today, his first ever race at Daytona. Bill Venturini, your final words to your son before this race begins were? Be safe. Yeah, this is, uh, I'd rather be in the seat driving a car than here. This is too nervous for me. Or in the broadcast booth. He told me he was pretty relaxed. He doesn't get too emotional before a race begins. But Oh, no, uh, I'm, I'm the emotional one. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is... Uh, this is a big race for us. It's a big day. I'm, I'm very happy that uh, Ed Renzi's come on board with us and Loctite and Engel and Simon Eyes and Dana Corporation. I'm just excited about it all and looking forward to a good year and I'm I'm nervous. He told us Wednesday he wants to win. Can he? If we get a good break, yeah. We've got a car that we feel can run at least in the top five. Uh, if the breaks happen, we have a good shot of winning. I'm not, I, 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 won't, I won't be disappointed if we don't but I won't be surprised if we did. Best of luck to you. Thanks a lot. A father today watches his son race for the first time at Daytona. And you know, they've gotten some help from some of the Winston Cup crews. Jeff Bice and the Melling crew for Lake Speed will be in there to help pit that car today for Billy Venturini. See some of the Melling guys milling around there in the pits. They will be able to help give him some experience on pit road. And that's Ed Renzi, the owner of the car that Bill Venturini was talking about. On board the American Online automobile driven by Andy Belmont. He starts back in 20 spots. Last year's Rookie of the Year, Josh Baltus out of Dayton, Ohio. Just graduated from Ohio State back in December in the Baltus Commercial Chevrolet. And there we see Frank Kimmel, the Advanced Auto Parts Chevrolet. Last year's winner, Andy Hillenberg, a two-time winner of this First Plus Financial 200. He starts in 11th spot. And the Midway Island Ford of Mark Thompson, one of the favorites to win this race today. Mark Gibson, who graduated from high school about 100 yards from turn four at Mainland High School. He starts fourth, finished third a year ago. And we're right along with the pole winner, Bill Baird. And the Saturn machine, Speedy Pop, Chevrolet. First career pole right here at Daytona. Unbelievable, about to go green. All right, five ARCA starts a year ago by Baird. Otherwise, never been at Daytona. Kenny Irwin, a rookie. Rookies on the front row. Glad to have you with us as the ARCA 200 is underway. Gerhardt. 
Gerhardt alongside Mark Gibson. They are single file up front, first and second. 47 car is Jimmy Kitchens. 66 Mark Thompson. The one car is Craig Butts. That's the James Finch automobile that runs so well here in the Arca Division in Daytona. First lap complete, and Kenny Irwin will lead the first lap of competition that he raced at Daytona International Speedway. And look what a jumble behind him as they battle for position. Takes him about a lap to get up to speed here because of the restrictor plate, trying to get up to about 185, 190 miles an hour. We're right along with Andy Belmont as he goes on the outside of Billy Venturini. And wow, was that close. Woo. It was about three years ago that Andy Belmont took a wild tumble down the back stretch, and now Mark Thompson makes a move inside of the five car of Gerhardt. And moves into the third spot. Right behind our pole sitter, Bill Baird, and our leader, Kenny Irwin. Guys, there's no question about it. Mark Thompson is now a more confident race car driver. After winning a couple of races on super speedways, I think that changes your whole attitude. He said, man, this car is good. If we're there at the end, we got a shot at winning. Front four cars, single file. They battle side by side, fifth, sixth, and seventh on back. That's Gibson on the inside for fifth place, the 59 car. Gerhardt up, up high in the five. The 47 is Kitchens, Kimmel the 46. And here goes Thompson down to the inside of Beard, trying to take a look. Uh, can he make it? No, he cannot. The ball back in the third spot. And Mike Giacchetti is in fourth spot. Starting back in eighth position. This is Bill Baird, the pole winner, second place right now as he looks at the back of Kenny Irwin, trying to figure out how he can pass or how he can stay in front of Mark Thompson. And Giacchetti's going to the outside of Thompson, taking that four to the outside, trying to take that third spot away. Mike Cicchetti side by side, teaming up with Stan Hoover for 1998, teaming their resources. Stan Hoover had a number of different drivers in his car a year ago. Had some success with about each and every driver. And Jerry, the number 80 car is carrying an engine which was built by Danny Glad from the Sitco team, and it's a pretty strong power plant. Mike is get, making a move now on Thompson to the high side. Many as they run side by side, that lets the front two pull away a little bit. It does, because these cars, as they run side by side, they will slow down. But now come, here comes Gearhart on the outside. He's going to help you, Kenny. Move on past Mark Thompson. And look at him, three abreast behind. That's Ron Barfield, a blue car right in the middle of the picture. in that pack up front, so the, the cars from first to 20th seem pretty evenly matched. This is Mark Thompson fighting his way through. As we take a look at our Tabasco Hot Zone telemetry, take a look at the RPMs on Mark Gibson's car number 59. As he comes off turn four, heads for the start finish line, we'll see how he accelerates or picks up speed down the straightaway. 182, 185. 186 I saw for just a moment. About three miles per hour, well, four miles per hour, he'll pick up from turn four to turn one. But you see, he touched the brake. He did not back off the accelerator, but he did touch the brake to check the speed of the car just a little bit as Andy Hillenberg goes by on the inside. Well, when he hit that brake, suddenly you saw Hillenberg's car appear on the inside. I guess momentum is everything on the restrictor plate tracks. It certainly is. And look down the back stretch, how much faster this car is. 191, 192, six miles per hour faster down the back stretch than the front stretch because that's the way the wind is blowing. Okay, here's Hillenberg, the gravy train Chevrolet, the Earl Sadler machine. Take a look at his serial progression. Started back at 11th spot. As he tries to go on the outside of Frank Kimmel. Now, Bobby Gerhardt has not been getting any help on the outside of that pack back there with the running side by side. And now, if Hillenberg comes up, maybe it'll help him. Hillenberg is trying to pass Gerhardt instead of help. Well, the front three are single file, and they are side by side for fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. That's the battle there. Front three with 27-year-old Kenny Irwin. 
being shown as our leader here in his first ever ARCA event. The 35th annual First Plus Financial is in the early laps, and a rookie leads the way. Back with more in a moment. Trouble. So instead of winning this series, they now go to a pivotal Game 7. Rich? Rich. If you're a person who's really into sports, you'll really be into new ESPN, the magazine. Don't you want to give us some scores? Are we still on the air? Issue after issue. What is going on here? This is weird. Hey, You'll be hey, involved like no sports magazine ever involved you before. Yeah, hello? Do we have a problem here? ESPN the magazine is big, bigger in size, bigger with news, pictures, player profiles, inside information, and amazing access to places you've never been before. Hey, what, what's up? And because we know that you know what happened last week, even last night, ESPN the magazine is mostly about what happens next. The matchups, the players and teams to watch, the ins, outs, and insights that are the real reason we really love sports. And the real reason ESPN people like Dan Patrick, Peter Gammons, Chris Mortensen, and many of the best sports writers in America will be talking sports in every issue. So call now for your charter subscription to ESPN The Magazine. You'll get a special deal, 26 issues, a whole year's worth, for just a dollar an issue. A dollar an issue? That's 66% off the newsstand price. And you'll get this great freebie. T-shirts. The first ever limited edition ESPN The Magazine T-shirt. 100% cotton with the world famous ESPN The Magazine bullseye logo right over your heart. Can I get a witness for this? Call now for your charter subscription to ESPN The Magazine. At last, you have something to do when you're not watching ESPN. Call 1-800-556-0606. 1-800-556-0606. Our speed road coverage of the 35th annual First Plus Financial 200 from Daytona International Speedway is being brought to you by Texaco, a world of energy. And by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Well, we are under caution here at Daytona. A wild scramble out of turn four involving at least a half a dozen cars. Major contact. Let's show you what happened just moments ago. Well, as they come off the corner, you see the one car. He's going to get it. I guess he's going to get booted from behind by Billy Venturini. He goes down, makes contact with Glenn Morgan in the 11. And down they go. And then we see the 50 car of Kenny Martin gets collected by the 49 of Joel White. That's the J.B. Well car. And Josh Baldus, the 18, is meanwhile is spinning, spinning. Is he going to hit anything? Keep off the wall. Looks like he was able to keep the car off the wall. Whoop, did I speak too soon? And we'll check this out from Josh Baltus onboard camera. Look at the smoke and listen. Wow, <laughs> so close to that wall. Wow, that is close. Let's check out the Onboard camera with Andy Belmont, the America Online on board. And we'll see all the smoke start. I don't think he was involved, so obviously he's going to drive through, through the smoke. And the seas parted, and Andy drove through. Well, Benny, at least a partial list of those drivers involved. We mentioned the car number one of Craig Butts, the 49 of Joel White. There's Joel White's car being towed away. He was involved with Kenny Martin, the contact in the outside wall. You saw some of the others, uh, Russell Landrum's 85 car, Kurt Piercy in the 51. We mentioned Josh Baltus and Glenn Morgan also involved in the car number 11. Under caution for the first time of the afternoon here in the First Plus Financial 200. ESPN Video presents NASCAR 1997 Year in Review. Relive the best of the 1997 NASCAR Winston Cup season. This is racing here. Get a behind-the-wheel look at the three-horse battle between Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, and Mark Martin. Plus other behind-the-scenes action for the best in NASCAR racing. I know who's got the baddest car here today. To order yours for just $14.99, call 1-800-717-ESPN. 
NASCAR 1997 Year in Review from ESPN Video. We got us a piece of the frontier for eight bucks. I sold 99 cents for $12. At Ameritrade, we never forget it's your money. So your trades are fast and accurate. Buy internet for $8. Touchtone phone for $12. Or with a broker for $18. I landed on Saturn for $18. Check out Ameritrade.com or call 1-800-592-1947. Open any account by April 15th and get a free IRA for life. Ameritrade, the way to trade, period. I told myself I was going to take a lot of heat, and I've gotten one or two letters here. And incidentally, Scott, age 11, from Winnipeg, stupid is spelled S-T-U-P-I-D, A. Eh? I'm Dale Jarrett. I'm Jeff Gordon. And I'm Dale Earnhardt. We're here at Daytona, USA. Cool attraction, huh? Yeah, nothing beats this. You're not leading. I could squeeze through there. Oh, he's such a kid. Let's go, the movie star. That's a fella, huh? I just want to let him around. What do you need? Oh, come on, get through this room. Trying to hog up the room. Back at Daytona International Speedway here in Daytona Beach, Florida, our continuing Speed Week's 1998 coverage. These wonderful shots courtesy of the fine folks at the Bud One Airship flying overboard under cloudless skies here in sunny Florida. What a gorgeous day for racing and what a great crowd on hand. We are under caution here for a wild scramble up out of turn four involving at least six cars. There's the Josh Baltus machine. You shall take the wild spin. We'll show you what happened. Watch the one car get a little bit of a tap possum from behind. Further contact and then everything breaks loose out of turn four. They're sliding. They're beating and banging. We'll come back and sort it out with more live action from Daytona in a moment. Michael came onto the scene in IndyCars as a winner. I'm very proud of the fact that he's carrying on the Andretti name. I'll never forget the first really competitive pass that he did on me. We banged wheels a little bit, and he was gone. Adios, Dada. <laughs> the Andrettis rely on the same Haviland Formula 3 motor oil you can buy right off the shelf. That's my boy. And for your cooling system, get Haviland Extended Life Antifreeze. In our quest for the finest brakes in the world, we tested our pads against other leading brands. With pad after pad, in test after test, the results were always the same. No other brand stopped shorter than Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. The ones we stock at AutoZone. With ESPN Magazine coming out, I really hope they take every precaution to avoid the coveraging situation. Something that's plagued me my entire career. Tiger Beat in 93, I sprained my ankle. Model Railroad in 96, I went into a five game slump. Cat Fancy almost ended my career. I know one thing, I'm never doing Cat Fancy again. Welcome back to Daytona. Coming off this last caution, this crash, the one car seemed to be heavily involved in it. When we talk, listen to you guys talk about the reach play, but the only place the car has bad damage is right in the left side door between the front, front tire and the driver's compartment. It's knocked in the crush panels. He's, he says there's a lot of smoke coming in there and stuff like that. As far as the toe in, they check the toe, put four tires on it. The front end seems to be pretty good, Benny. And we've seen cars run down here before with the sides torn off them that'll run fast but most of the time not with a restrictor plate, so this guy's in for a long afternoon. Imagine that, spinning at Daytona at 185 miles per hour and being able to go back on the racetrack. Well, let's see if we can see what happened to this car number one. Top of your screen. Well, the red car is number one. He gets just a slight bump from behind from the Billy Venturini car, and there's a the damage. Look at the damage that it does to the Glenn Morgan car with that bump in the door. In the door. Obviously, Glenn Morgan hit the door bars on the one, and did all that damage to the front of his car. Bill Weber? Uh, Benny, I just ran down pit road, and as Dr. Bunch pointed out, Jeff Bice, who works with Lake Speed's team, is crew chiefing for Billy Venturini today, 
And I asked him, did he hit the one car? He said he thought he did, but apparently they believe he did not touch them. There is no mark on the front of the car. So they're not certain that he hit him or not. I can't see the video down here. You can up there. But the humorous note he added is that Bill Venturini Sr. was much harder to keep calm than Billy Venturini. Well, you see the blue and white car right there is Mark Gibson in number 59. I think Gibson had to come on the brake just a little bit coming off four, and Butts may have hit the brake, which started him sliding. Yeah, it's really hard to tell from our vantage point how much if there was contact as Hank Wetzel waves the green once again, lap 13, five laps under caution. You see Harris Devane, the winner of our last ARCA race here on ESPN in Atlanta last November. What a finish that was, huh, BP? Was terrific. Kenny Irwin pulling about uh, seven or eight car lengths away from Bill Baird on the start. A two car, Ron Barfield. He's going to be driving this year a uh, half a dozen races or maybe 12 races for the Ricky Craven operation in the NASCAR Bush Series. And we thought they'd bring New Holland down and run the ARCA races and see what kind of success they would have. Well, they've had a lot of success, Benny, no doubt about that. And here's your kitty right on the back bumper. <laughs> Mike Giacchetti in the car number 80, a pair of Fords up front, Baird in the Chevrolet. He's taking a look at the inside. And Bobby Gearhart, the Indians up in Upper Michigan must, must be excited. The Kiwaden Casino Chevrolet in third spot, taking a look for the lead. Bobby Gearhart, the 1988 Rookie of the Year in the car number five, the purple and white numeral car number five right there, has never won an ARC event. He said, I would love to win it here at Daytona, my first at the World Center of Racing. Barfield going by our pole sitter, Baird. Right along with Mark Thompson as he's on the inside of Frank Kimmel. There he is, a 66 car alongside 46. Kenny Irwin still managed to hold the lead. He's led every lap. This is the 14th lap. Irwin has led every one of them. Five by side, back for third spot. And of course, Gerhard in the car number five, running on the inside. Andy Hillenberg in the 95 car, the gravy train car, who won this race a year ago from the pole. You're riding along now with his roof camera, looking at, basically looking at Frank Kimmel's roof cam, looking ahead at Hillenberg, and now Mark Thompson. And Thompson on the inside is just not going any places. The outside line is going to town. It's Bill Baird, a pole sitter, pulls up on the outside of Thompson. All this going on about 15 car lengths behind the leader, Kenny Irwin. I'll tell you what, 46 of Kimmel and the five of almost got together. Watching Gerhardt now from Baird's roof cam. You see him to the left of him is Mark Thompson. Watch the five car in the. They're doing some dancing, aren't they? Well, they are back and forth. The air buffeting the car. 183 miles an hour the last lap by there. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, Mark Thompson, as Ray pointed out, had a very successful season a year ago, including a very dominant car at Talladega. The problem with that is, when you're that good, you're not going to find a lot of friends. He cannot get himself a dancing partner at this point. In fact, his team has actually patrolled pit road looking for someone to help him, but they have not found any volunteers. And <laughs> Gearhart and Kimmel still side by side. Looks like 185 mile per hour parade lap as they are side by side, two by two on back through the traffic. That is for fourth and fifth position, Kimmel and Gearhart. 27 cars, Kenny Irwin, the Robert Yates on machine. His first ever ARCA start, Mike Cicchetti, a good run for the Hughes Supply. Car number 80, that's in second spot. Fourth Thunderbird. And the fourth car in line, folks, there, the double zero, Rick Eckert, is now a lap down, and he needs to move over and get out of the way. Looks like he will and let that parade go right on by. Three of 
breast for just a second with Eckert on the inside. And Gearhart and Kimmel still side by side. And Gerhardt's car doing a little bit of bobbling coming off turn two just a moment ago. The back of the car waggling a little bit. Now he tries to pull in front of Kimmel. He does with the help of Bill Baird. Well, those two guys need to get in line because there's about five cars behind them. They're all single file and Bill Baird should duck in that line and try to get back up and catch those leaders. See the New Holland car, the blue car top of your screen, number two, Ron Barfield. Ron told me in the garage this morning this is the best race car he has ever sat in. It has so much torque in the corners. He said, I have a great shot here today. We see he's back in seventh spot. We'll actually make that sixth spot now as he's able to get by the 52 of Baird. First time Ron Barfield came here was in 1996. He finished fifth in that race. Then he came back last year, qualified second, and finished second. So Barfield's a strong contender anytime he's running at Daytona. There's Bill Baird, the 52 car. He was our pole setter running on the inside of Ed Barrier. Jimmy Kitchens in the 47 car. That car prepared by Red Farmer. That's the white car without a sponsor. Kitchens impressive in qualifying. Qualifying fifth overall. And Mike Wallace, he's got his barred stuff up right behind Kitchen. There he is, a number six car. Checking the speeds out at the line. That time, the two car up Barfield, a little bit quicker, 184.570. If people are wondering what Wallace's uh, barred stuff was, that's a lot of different people loaned him with stuff to get here, including a car from Michael Cranifus. Oh, we heard the 59 car. Let's go inside the Tabasco hot zone and see what kind of speed that the 59 car of Mark Gibson's been able to get up to. 187 through the corner on the break a little bit. And I tell you what, Gibson's car, he's struggling with the chassis right now. You think so, Bill Weber? Yeah, I know so. You can tell by watching Benny. I found out by asking his brother. That car is definitely pushing, so he's battling a pushing condition on that race car. Started with a real good qualifying position. Started in the top five, but now he's falling outside the top ten. On the front stretch, big crash. Oh, two or three cars come into the outside wall and slide along the wall, spinning sideways. The 21 car, that's straight. And Josh Baldus, the 18, once again involved. There we see, and this time Baldus was not nearly as fortunate as the last time. Some pretty serious damage to his car. As his car has come to rest in the grassy apron, entering turn one. All right, Bill Weber, tell us what happened. Well, Benny, they were going down the front stretch side by side. It looked like the one car just got a little bit loose, and then they got together, and you uh, saw the results. And there is the one car that he's talking about, Craig Butts. Second accident or incident of the day that Butts has been involved in in the car number one. He's a rookie out of Montgomery, Alabama. He is a lobbyist. Working down in the state capital of Alabama, former Alabama graduate. Having a tough day here at Daytona driving for James Finch. Everybody in NASCAR is a lobbyist. Yeah. They lobby NASCAR for rule changes and ARCA for rule changes and everybody else. Let's take a look from the 18 onboard camera. As Glenn Brewer goes by. Oh! Just riding along and all of a sudden contact. Pretty simple to tell what happened there. Boy, you could even hear that. And poor old Bob Strait just happened to be a victim back there. Had nowhere to go. See if we can watch it from our Bud oh. airship. The one car got on the apron. He touched the apron of the, of the racetrack, got his car out of shape, and as he tried to save it, turn right in the left rear quarter of the 18. Wow. Mm. Poor Josh Ballas. Now the number one car limping down pit road trying to get to the James Finch pits, but that car very, very heavily damaged. There's the Vision Land Chevrolet. James Finch has won two consecutive ARCA 200s, and there they have gotten Josh Baltus out of the car, and they begin to, there is Josh walking around behind the car, the 1997 Rookie of the Year, and as we said, a recent graduate of Ohio State University. He graduated from Ohio State on December 12th and was honored as Rookie of the Year for ARCA on December 13th. Back in a moment. For the Denver Broncos, it was a wild ride. 
with a super finish. They have won Super Bowl 32. Sports Illustrated salutes the Denver Broncos with this exclusive super pack. The incredible new NFL Films video, The Denver Broncos Super Bowl 32 Champions. Plus, this collector's dream, a limited edition Super Bowl commemorative sports watch. Both great gifts are free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Week after week, game after game, nobody beats Sports Illustrated. Call this number now and take a fabulous ride through a sensational season and the thrilling playoffs. Then be there as John Elway and the Broncos get sweet revenge with an amazing Super Bowl victory. Davis to the end zone. Touchdown, Denver! You'll share the excitement with those who made it happen. Oh, what a catch! You'll be inside the huddle and learn their plans. I think this is a touchdown. Really good. Inside the five from the pile on, touchdown! It's the one and only Denver Broncos in this one-of-a-kind video. Free from Sports Illustrated. Don't miss this exclusive Super Pack, including this terrific Denver Broncos Super Bowl sports watch. This fine collector's watch features both the official Super Bowl 32 logo and the Broncos team logo. It keeps Super Time, a championship memento you'll treasure forever. The world champions! Broncos have done it! Both great collector's items are free with your order of 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the famous swimsuit issue, for only $1.48 an issue. Save over 57% off the cover price. For quicker delivery of your Super Pack, use your credit card. 45-50, here we go again. 45-40, one to beat for. Call now to get the exclusive Super Pack, the limited edition Broncos Super Bowl sports watch, and the great Broncos video, both free from Sports Illustrated. A sports experience like no other. Sports Illustrated, you can't beat it. Well, here's why we're under caution for the second time today. Riding along with Josh Baltus, that you can feel this. Oh. Folks, I don't know if you could. I could. Mm. And from the Bud One airship, take a look at what happened to last year's Rookie of the Year. Craig butts the one crow on the inside, gets on the apron of the racetrack, gets loose, goes up, and boom, right in the side of poor old Josh Baldus, the 18. Well, the uh, drivers appear to be okay, and Kyle is standing by with one of them. Kyle? Yeah, I'm standing here with Craig Button. Like I told him, I said, not the def definitely not the way you want to start off the season, but at least you're able to walk away. What happened in the first one, and then talk about it, then what happened in the second incident out there? Well, we were coming off four, and somebody got in the back of me, a car in front of me, backed off, and I had to check up, and the car behind me got in me, turned me sideways, and then we come in, get ready, go back out, and we were moving up through the field, and... I got run down through the end. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. The, they, they might not have a spot on top. I don't know. Well, you can see he's a little upset over both incidents, guys. But I'm going to tell you what. We watched some of the Bud shoot out earlier. Same thing happens with Winston Cup guys sometimes. So, Benny, what he was saying is someone someone ran him down onto the apron, which we didn't probably see. That's why he was trying to come across the racetrack and lost it. I think that Josh Gibson in the 47 car, uh, I think, was side by side or something. Josh Gibson, Josh Balls was side by side with someone, and maybe he thought they were going to come down in front. Of him. It didn't look like it on the. It looked like he had room on their on our shot from the Bud Airship uh, camera, but. He might have felt like they were coming down and he drove down the apron of the racetrack. All right, still in any event, a lot of damage, a lot of repair work to be done on that car as we are under caution for the second time today here at Daytona International Speedway. Watch at speed as Josh Baltus, who has been basically a cue ball for both caution events early and this one here. In the early laps of the 35th annual First Plus Financial 200, it has been smoked and spins and near misses. We're back with more green flag action after this. To accomplish everything you need to do on the ground, often 
you have to spend time in the sky. Now, what you do both places can help you get where you really want to go. Introducing the Delta Sky Miles credit card from American Express. Giving you American Express service on the ground and Delta Airlines service in the sky. You can apply now. Just call 1-800-492-1900. With the Delta Sky Miles credit card, every dollar you spend gets you a Delta Sky Mile. And when you buy your Delta ticket with it, you gain even faster. You get one and a half Sky Miles for every dollar you spend. Plus, you receive 5,000 bonus Sky Miles automatically with the card. And when you apply now, you'll benefit from this low introductory rate. Call 1-800-492-1900. We can take all the information in just a few minutes. Call today. The sooner you get the Delta Sky Miles credit card, the sooner you can get someplace you really want to go. Welcome to Mr. P's Etiquette Club. Tip number one. Never distract a putting golf. Tip number two. Cellular phone calls are unacceptable during a game. And don't gloat if you win ESPN Senior PGA Tour sweepstakes. Presented by Royal Caribbean and Pearl Vision. You could win a trip to the 1999 Royal Caribbean Classic, a cruise, and great prizes from Pearl Vision. To enter, watch the LG Championship, listen for the shot of the day, and call the number show. Back at Daytona Beach, Florida, Daytona International Speedway, working caution for the second time today. Kenny Irwin has led to the drop of the green flag. Mike Cicchetti, uh, driving for Stan Hoover Motorsports in 1998, runs in second spot. Andy Hillenberg, last year's winner in third. Bobby Gerhardt and Frank Kimmel rounding up the top five. And that was, I was talking about a moment ago about the Josh Baldus car being side by side with someone. I said Jimmy Kitchens is 47. In fact, it was Glenn Brewer in the 10 car Ray Dunlap told me during the break. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome. Take a look at Ron Barfield. He has made a good move from 13th all the way up to sixth spot now. So the two cars running pretty good. Ed Barrier back in seventh spot. There's Kitchens back in eighth. He started in fifth spot. As we look to the rest of the field, Cunningham from 30th up to 22nd. And we see all these cars off the track, pace cars off the track, and green flag about to come out. Kenny Irwin leads him down, rookie driver, 28 years of age, out of Indianapolis, Indiana. After a year on the Craftsman Truck Series Tour, he will run for Rookie of the Year in 1998 in Winston Cup. Come up to speed, Benny Irwin hadn't had to learn too much yet than anybody in the draft zone. He's been leading the whole time. No. Now we see Chiquetti's getting the challenge from Andy Hillenberg and Gearhart on the inside. Here there comes a train on the inside. Frank Kimmel trying to go by. Chiquetti's car did not come up to speed at all like Kenny oh. Irwin's did. And Blaze Alexander slow on the back stretch. That's the race camp Chevrolet for the 1996 Rookie of the Year. He will run for Rookie of the Year in the Bush Series here in 98. He slows down as they are scrambling for second and third coming out of turn four. He's fought his way into second spot. is looking out the back of Andy Hillenberg, Hillenberg's car and Bobby Gearhart. And you're looking at a pair of ex-Winston Cup cars right there. Mike Cicchetti in the number 80 car, a car that Joe Rutman ran in the Daytona 500. And that five car, a former Jeff Gordon, all Hendrick race car that Bobby Gearhart bought. And take a look, Mike Wallace in the car number six just, just entered the top ten. Wallace putting together a car from Michael Kranovich, borrowed things from Robert Yates, Roger Penske, and about three or four other teams that have enough parts and pieces to come down here now being shown in 10th spot. And Kenny Straters, they've used Straters Transporter to get the car here. He came with one thought in mind, he's not going to win this race. And we'll see. That's pretty, and I love the side-by-side -side high bank racing. The 80 cars, Chiquetti, the five cars, Gerhardt, and Kimmel, the 46. If you're looking over to the right of Kimmel, that's the two of Ron Barfield driving for Ricky Craven. You hear the engine? You don't hear him lift off. <laughs> if the cash is anywhere, Close to being right, they will never back off the accelerator. 
Guys, this first pack of race cars has 16 cars in it that's still running in that draft. We talked at the top of the show about how much tighter the field was this year, and that certainly shows it right there. Still two by two from third place back. Let's check into the pitch with Bill Weber. Paul Blaze, Alexander has coasted to a stop along pit road. The engine was not running when he got here. They believe it's a plug wire, but now they continue to look underneath the hood. The engine off place sits in the car, almost didn't make it to his pit stall. So obviously he had shut the engine off quite a way back on the track. But they were hoping it was a plug wire, but now the investigation continues and Blaze parked in the pits. Well, Blaze driving for Robert Day. Grady Humphreys there walking around the front of the car. He's the crew chief, and that, uh, that'll, that'll call it a day for them. Unfortunately, just a limited schedule in our pit. Well, Blaze will get another chance to go racing here at Daytona. He's entered for the Bush Grand National race here next Saturday and hopes to make that driving a car that he co-owns with Jimmy Spencer. They call that Operation Keystone Motorsports. There is Gerhardt now trying to move up in front of the car number two. And Ed Barrier's going by the Frank Kimmel car. There goes Mike Wallace by the Kimmel car. So Kimmel was running six and losing positions right and, well, I start to say right and left, but it's only to the right he's losing positions. Mark Gibson on the high side of Kimmel. There's Billy Venturini, the yellow Simon Eye machine. Car number 83. One of the stories we were following all week long, the second generation drivers. Looks like Hillenberg might be going to make a move on him, guys. On the outside, he's got Giacchetti with him. Gravy train Chevrolet, last year's winner here at Daytona. And they are side by side. See if that Robert Yates horsepower can make a difference down the backstretch. Chiquetti's going to go to the low side. Three abreast on the inside takes the lead. Wow. Got those two leaders side by side and said, I know what to do here. And he will lead this lap. Mike Chiquetti. Lap 31, 49 to go. And Mike Chiquetti, a former Winston Cup crew member. He worked for Alan Kowicki and he worked for Rick Mast. And now he leads in our cup. Let's check in the Tabasco hot zone, see what kind of RPM, what kind of speed we can find as we go down the back stretch. The wind is blowing that way, catching a little bit of draft. 187 should move up. 188, 189, 190. Can we have 191? No, 100. Yep, yeah, just 191 as he drops the car off into the corner. And you see, by not backing off the accelerator, they go down to 180. 382 miles per hour in the corner. And there was no brake pedal light came on either. No. Just had his foot buried in the throttle. Our Tabasco hot zone to them if you're keeping you abreast of exactly how fast they're going. Off a gravy train in car. Andy Hillenberg. Speaking of gravy trains, look at them lined up coming off in the draft. But you know what, Benny? I think Andy Hillenberg learned something there. He knows that he can pull up on the outside of Kenny Irwin and go to the high side and hopefully make that pass if somebody else doesn't foil him like Mike Chiquetti did. Chiquetti started back in eighth spot. Now being shown as the leader. I mentioned he worked for a different, couple different Winston Cup teams. He worked for Rick Mast. When Rick was driving for Richard Chester, he worked for Alan in the car number seven. And now for the first time puts together an operation with Stan Hooper for 1998 and finds himself leading in the first plus financial 200 here at Daytona. 32 of 80 laps are complete. Chiquetti is our leader. I wish my parents could be here to see me win, but I know that's not possible because it's lunch. And right now, get two Big Macs for just $2. Did somebody say McDonald's? Proud to feed the world's Olympic athletes. In racing, the engine is everything. What? It's the driver. A driver will never see a finish line without a great engine. The greatest engine will never see a victory lap without a great driver. At least they agree on Haviland Formula 3 motor oil, the same oil you can buy right off the shelf. And also try Haviland Extended Life Antifreeze. The engine's the first thing with the finish line. Not in Indy cars. 
This is NASCAR 98. I'm in a groove with new scuffs. Talk fast. Are fans that loyal to their driver sponsor? Uh, Nate. What? NASCAR 98, the ultimate judge. EA Sports. It's in the game. These antiperspirants, they're history. Because now there's something that keeps you drier. Sure Ultra Dry. It's a better kind of antiperspirant. A soft solid. With just two clicks, it goes on dry to keep you ultra dry. Just watch. An ordinary solid can flake off. But Sure Ultra Dry vanishes in to form an invisible layer of protection that keeps you drier than ever before. Prove it to yourself. Sure Ultra Dry goes on dry, keeps you ultra dry. Before the flag drops, tune in for up-to-the-minute pre-race news and interviews. We'll take you inside the Oval with a special RPM Today at 11, followed by NASCAR Today. Daytona 500, Inside the Oval, February 15th on ESPN2. ESPN Speed World coverage continues from Daytona International Speedway. Today, the first plus financial 200 ARCA race. We're celebrating 50 years of NASCAR this year and all kinds of things planned here on ESPN. This coming Friday night at 7.30, the fifth and final installment of The 50. Telling the story of the NASCAR family down through the years of the last 50 and where it might be in the coming 50 years. Join us at 7.30 this coming Friday night for the final installment of The 50. I'm here on the Sports Center set inside the infield of Daytona International Speedway. We, of course, have been here for the 24 hours, the Rolex 24. Our stock car coverage started last Wednesday. We brought you the exciting Bud Shootout qualifier today, won by Jimmy Spencer. Now we're in the middle of the ARCA race, and we continue our coverage every day this coming week except Thursday. Tomorrow, the Bush Grand National cars will go onto the racetrack. We'll have qualifying for them, the Dash Series. You stay with us this coming week. We'll take you right up to happy hour preceding the Daytona 500. Well, we've had two leaders so far in this ARCA race. Kenny Irwin Jr. led the first 30 laps. Now Mike Cicchetti is on top. We go back to the booth and Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, Mike Cicchetti showing the way. You're riding along with a gravy train machine. That is uh, Andy Hillenberg currently being shown back in third spot behind Kenny Irwin. Irwin in the Raybestos Ford of Robert Yates. Actually, it's David Blair who entered that car for Robert Yates. We should give David Blair the credit for that car number 27 that Kenny Irwin is driving here at Daytona. That's right, because it's Shorty Edwards and those guys from right. David, David Blair Motorsports that's maintaining the Irwin car. It is a Robert Yates engine, and Robert Yates was over tuning on the car. And that's a, that's a Thunderbird they actually had last year, Benny, that they never raced. It was a backup car to Dale Jarrett and the 88 team, and they thought it was such a good race car to bring here and run at the Arco event. And it looks like it is a pretty good race car. They're running laps right now, about 184 miles per hour average speed. And that's after 38 laps. We've talked about the front three, but how about my boy back in four spot, the New Holland Chevrolet, Ron Barfield, as you're riding along with the gravy train Chevy. But uh, Ronnie Barfield has come all the way from, what, 13th starting spot to run fourth in the car number two. And, Jerry, he's got a brand-new crew chief working with him on this deal. Vic Kangas, a longtime Winston Cup crew chief, is over there helping him out. They're going to run some ARCA and some Bush Grand National. All right, and Mike Wallace trying to make a move inside of Ed Barrier as they battle side by side. That's from sixth position. Jimmy Kitchens right behind. And there comes Kirk Shomardine, longtime crew chief for Dale Earnhardt after Richard Childress Racing. Kirk spent 12 years at Richard Childress, won four Winston Cup championships with Dale Earnhardt, so a lot of experience wrenching the car and now getting some experience driving the race car. I never see Bill Baird. He's in 16th place after starting from the pole. We see Mark Thompson on the left, Billy Venturini on the right. Venturini now is running in 14th position. That's a young man we followed all week long. I would guess right now that his dad said, look, you're doing okay. Just stay in this lead draft. We're halfway. we got to make a pit stop. Everything is going to be okay. Run once again right along with Bill. We're right in inside Bill Baird's car. And, folks, the reason we're following this young man and Adam Larson, these second-generation drivers, Billy Venturini and Adam Larson, is that they have never drafted on a super speedway, and they are learning a lot about what the air can do. 
they say some of the veterans can even see the air coming over the car. These guys right now are just able to feel it and hang on. Mike Cicchetti will pick up a $1,000 bonus for leading the halfway from Auto Value Parts Stores. Midway Island Roof Camp for Mark Thompson. We mentioned two-time winner back in 1997. As Renterini trying to get by the 46 car of Frank Kimmel. And that will move him up another position, up into 13th spot. Mark Thompson's making his 75th start in the Arcabondo Marheit Series today. One at Charlotte and at Michigan in 1997. So two big track victories for him. See if he can get back up there and fight for it today. See Warren Benning being overtaken by the leaders. That's Ron Barfield you saw a moment ago in four spot and Bobby Gerhardt back in fifth. Kenny Irwin, the 27 car, was trying to get a little help from that slower car, the lap car, to get by Jacchetti. Not able to do it. Guys, we've got a couple unfamiliar names up front there, a few that are familiar to folks that have been watching, but one guy that's not in the field today is Tim Steele, last year's champion in the Arcabondo Marheit Series. He's resting at home after uh, an incident in uh, Atlanta where he had an accident, and he will not probably be on the racetrack again until June or July. And we certainly wish him a speedy recovery, Tim, a good friend of all of ours. I mean, what a dedicated, what an incredible year he had back in 1997. Tim Steele dominating the ARCA series a year ago. All right, with 38 laps to go, they're going to be coming close to their pit window. It will require one stop and one stop only. They will probably take on four tires and fuel and then go to the checkered flag. We'll take a break and come back and catch those stops in a moment. Zoltron. I see you had a pizza delivered. Afraid not. Sure looks like it to me. You call Zoltron a liar? Look, space boy. Here on Earth, if it looks like delivery, chances are. It's DiGiorno. The self-rising crust pizza that bakes up fresh like pizzeria pizza. For fresh baked pizza at home. Cute. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. They are guardian angels on wheels. Knights in shining armor who ride like the wind. And when lives are at stake, they are the cavalry that always comes through. That's why Texaco tests and retests clean system three gasoline under extreme emergency conditions. For all our heroes, for all of us, Texaco, a world of energy. In our quest for the finest brakes in the world, we tested our packs against other leading brands. With pad after pad, in test after test, the results were always the same. No other brand stopped shorter than Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. The ones we stock at AutoZone. Daytona International Speedway here in Daytona Beach, Florida, the 35th annual First Plus Financial 200. Pit stop should be just a few laps away for some of the cars, although in the garage this morning, I heard that some of the guys could go closer to 60 laps because of the gear they're pulling. Well, they can probably go 60 laps, but they need to pit with someone. They need to maintain a drafting partner. And Bill Baird, the number 52 car, is going to come off the racetrack and head for the pits, just as we talk about it. He's the pole winner. All right, he's headed down pit road, 65 miles an hour, headed toward you, Kyle Petty. This pit road's a long ways at 65 miles an hour. Bill Baird had started on the pole, had dropped to the back of that lead draft at about the 14th or 15th position. We checked in to see if there was anything wrong. He said, hey, he's a little bit nervous about this. He's had a lot going on in his life in the last few days. He's just getting everything organized, thinking about things. They go to the right side of the car. The hoops is making the calls down here, but the wedge wrench in the right rear, they've got the right side up, two cans of gas. Having a little trouble with the right rear. But uh, he's beginning to make a chance. He just, no, I tell you, he's moving the track bar is what he's moving. So, uh, coming around, he's just changing right side. He can't get the second can of gas in it. I'm not sure they got the second can of gas in it, but he's back out there. 
Well, he lost the uh, head scan guy. He ended up uh, tumbling toward turn one there in the grass. And he's up and okay, fortunately. Man, oh man, that was kind of scary. The guy's going to drag him on the racetrack. I wonder if the can just got called or whether he just lost his balance. He was, might have been trying to push the car and lost his balance, but it was a curious situation there for a second. There's Timmy Cahooth there coming toward you in the glasses and the rest of the Speedy Pop crew. See if we can see what happened to the catch can man. We'll watch. Yeah, we see him pushing the car and he just got kind of tripped over another guy. And he tumbled toward the grass. Fortunately, he rolled in the grass, so he apparently is okay. And, guys, they took on right-side tires only, but I don't think you'll see that from the top four or five guys in this field. When they come in, I'd imagine they're going to go with four tires. Of course, they're all on Hoosier radial tires. So this ARCA event Hoosier is the official tire in ARCA. We see now that we've got a pretty good two-car breakaway. Uh, they're about a second and a half in front of the third-place car of Andy Hillenberg. What about a second and a half looks like. Got to wonder if we have a green flag pit stop, how much the experience or inexperience of the Winston Cup crew versus Mike Cicchetti's crew. I'm talking about Kenny Irwin is driving for Robert Yates. And now Cicchetti, whoa, He's, slowing down. I guess Cicchetti was slowing and Kenny started to go around him and said, no, I'll stay back here. Well, Cicchetti started to come in, and I think Kenny Irwin said, well, he was going to pass him and then come in. Then he decided he would fall behind him. And we have a lot of cars coming out pit road to you, Bill Weber. And we were expecting this. The pit boards have been out for about two laps, and three of these cars are pitted right in a row. The 80, the 59, and a spin on the front stretch coming out of four. It's Billy Venturini. He's in the grass trying to make his way to pit road. We stay green. Cars on pit road. Irwin is in his pit. Two pits in front of him is Shaketti. Gibson swings in between them. They go to the right side. They'll add fuel to get these cars to the finish. Clean the windshield. Right side scuff Hoosier tires going on the 80 car. Right side stickers going on for the 59. Kenny Irwin gets Getting quick service from the Robert Yates crew and David Blair Motorsports. They've got the left sides on, waiting on fuel now. It's only two tires, two tires. The 80 car is down, tries to get away and does. Irwin chases him. Now they wait for the 59 to pull away. He's in the race and Venturini joins back in with that group. So he'll hook up with some pretty fast guys here on the restart. And, and here's a battle coming. for the lead as they come down off pit road and Irwin will pass Jaquetti to take the lead. Kyle Fanny. Hillenberg is, did not pit with the leaders on the last lap. He chose to run one more lap and come in. These guys, they had a heck of a race on pit road, the 27 of those guys did. They go to the right side of the car. Jack up the right side. Stickers are going on the right side. The other team down there, 52 car, bear put scuffs on the right side. They're going stickers on the right side. First can of gas is in. Having a little trouble with the right rear. Lug nuts are falling off. They're picking them up. Second can of gas is going in. They're just opting to change two, it looks like, because they've not started the race. Only and he's back out. Well, Ron Barfield, Andy Hillenberg, and Mike Wallace all electing to wait an extra lap to come in. So those three cars now exiting pit road, they'll have to get together and try to draft toward that first group that pitted a lap ago. I tell you what, Billy Venturini, if you're going to spin on the racetrack, I guess that would be a perfect place to spin because he's got to make a pit stop anyway so he spun right at the head of pit road he drove across the grass on the pit road and really and truly didn't look like he lost that much time on the track the only concern would be if he flat spotted the left side tires but i would guess that the vibration would tell him if he did or did not and he part is exiting the pits daytona beach florida resident driving for jim and judy gardner Harris Devane in the pits and the 46 car, Frank Kimball. Here's Billy Venturini. And uh, boy, did he dodge a bullet or what? That's the only question is, did he flat spot the left side tires? I'm sure they changed the right sides, but did not have time to change four. He passed the 59 car the last lap, and this time he's behind him again. So all these cars battling for position. That's Venturini. Andy Belmont leading this group. Here comes Mark Thompson. Guy that's running second, Bill Weber. And he comes to a stop on pit road. They'll clean his windshield. He's getting sticker tires on the right side. Right rear, right front. Thompson guns the engine, sits patiently in the car. Second can of fuel going in. There will be two tires only for the Midway Island Ford. They're going to make a chassis adjustment on the right side. One round. Now they wait. Cars down. And Mark Thompson shoves it in gear, puts his foot to the floor, and he takes off very patiently. Now the five is also on pit road. Kyle Petty. 
The five car, they debated at about 13 or 14 laps on whether to come in and top it off. They were one of the crew that was talking about going 60 laps on the tank of gas. They opted not to. Now they've gone further than everybody else is. They've opted to stay out a little bit longer to try to stretch their fuel mileage as far as they can. He's working his way down pit road. These guys got brand new uniforms. They're looking good this year, starting off the year. They go to the right side of the car. They don't go to the right side of the car. These guys are just gas and go, man. One can of gas in. One can, the second can is standing there ready. They go to the second can of gas. This is a no tire stop here. No tires. Second can of gas is over. These guys are gone. Well, Billy Gerhardt, who is the older brother of Bobby, is the crew chief and has made the call. And you're right, Cal. They're one of the teams I talked to that could go like 66 laps on fuel, but decided to go ahead and come in and make a pit stop. And the leaders have made their pit stops. It should be green now, all the way to the lap 80 at the conclusion of this first plus financial 200. Back with more live ARCA coverage in just a moment. Now there's a tire that can survive even this, the Goodyear Eagle F1 run flat. Even with no air pressure, Goodyear run flat technology lets you drive up to 50 miles at 55 miles per hour so you can drive to safety. Eagle F1 run flat. Serious freedom. Only from Goodyear. Goodyear, Goodyear. This year, thousands of people will visit places like Florida, Mexico, San Francisco, and the Bahamas. And who will take them there? Sea Doo, the best selling boat in the world. Right now, with the purchase of a new Sea Doo watercraft or jet boat, you'll get free travel on Delta Airlines or make no payments on your new Sea Doo till September 98. It's ride free, fly free for a limited time at your participating Sea Doo dealer. Michael came onto the scene in IndyCars as a winner. I'm very proud of the fact that he's carrying on the Andretti name. I'll never forget the first really competitive pass that he did on me. We banged wheels a little bit, and he was gone. Adios, Dada. <laughs> the Andrettis rely on the same Haviland Formula 3 motor oil you can buy right off the shelf. That's my boy. And for your cooling system, get Haviland Extended Life Antifreeze. Back at Daytona International Speedway here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Laps continuing to click down. 54 are complete of 80, which comprise this event, the richest in ARCA history. $208,384 up for grabs, over $21,000 to the winner. This is the leader of the race, a 72 car. Chad Coleman has not pitted. He obviously stopped earlier on some of the cost of flags for fuel. He's out on the racetrack and did, has not pitted on this green flag situation, is still the leader. We see Bob Strait, who spun earlier, came to the pits, is in second spot. Danny Moran, Donnie Moran is in third. And Mike Wallace and Ron Barfield of the cars that pitted are running fourth and fifth. So once we cycle the pit stops, it should show that Wallace and Barfield, among the cars that have already made stops and are set to go for the completion of the race, would be at the top of the leaderboard. The five car of Bobby Gerhardt took about 12 seconds to do fuel only with no tires. Mark Thompson came in and got just right side tires with about a 17 second stop. And the 27 car of Kenny Irwin took 25 seconds, but he got four tires. That should be the big difference. Yeah, these two guys up front here, the six car and the two car, that's Mike Wallace once again being shown driving a car he borrowed from Michael Cranifus in the car number six. Parts from Robert Yates, parts from Roger Penske, parts from Kenny Schrader, and parts from other friends to get him down here. And Mike said the reason that he was going to do this, Cranifus wanted to sell this race car, be able to sell some of those T-Birds. And before they ever got this car on the racetrack, somebody bought it. So right now, Mike is driving a car somebody else owns. What about the guys who are leading up front, Coleman, Strait, and Donnie Moran? Can they go the rest of the way? Why don't we check in with Kyle Petty? Well, I'm going to give you the answer. Kyle Petty doesn't have a clue whether they can go the rest of the way or not. But like, like Jerry and you guys said, some of these guys were thinking they could go stretch it to 60 laps. These guys pitted on lap 22. They were involved in some of these early accidents. They saw some things happening. They pitted, changed tires, 
gassed, they feel like they can at least go within one or two laps. And they're talking about stretching it all the way. So when we start talking pit stops and cycles and things like that, without a caution, these guys are going to go for it. Well, that could make it interesting. Well, the 72 car is running 180 miles per hour, and Mike Wallace is only running 181 miles per hour. So obviously, he's not going to catch him. The, the fastest cars on the racetrack, racetrack right now is the 80 Giacchetti and the 27 of Irwin. They're running over 185 miles per hour. All right, our AutoZone race recap. Our leader is the car number 72. And then, of course, the efforts of Chad Coleman out of Greenville, South Carolina. has led five of 57 laps. There have been five lead changes, two cautions for a total of nine laps. That's why the average speed is down to 144.836 miles per hour. Our lap leaders, Kenny Irwin dominating the early part of the race. Mike Cicchetti, Chad Coleman, our current leader. Bobby Gerhardt led four. And last year's winner, Andy Hillenberg, led a lap. Off the track, Josh Baltus, last year's rookie of the year, running for the championship this year, involved in a couple incidents. They are trying to get that car repaired to get back out for those valuable ARCA points. And out of the race, well, the list is Ed Curtis, Blaze Alexander, Craig Butts, Glenn Morgan, Russell Landrum, and the next page shows Kenny Martin and Joel White. Number two car, Chad Coleman, the leader of the race. Car right in the middle behind Kirk Shelmerdine. And there's Glenn Brewer right behind him. Brewer's a couple of laps down. Chad got his college degree from Newberry College. And when he said, I'm going to go race, and he thought, I ought to buy a Winston Cup car. So he went and talked to Jeff Bodine. That's where he picked up this race car. It used to be a number seven. It'll be 20 laps to go next time by, but the six and the two, these guys have pitted most recently in lap 49, so they are good to go. They're probably wondering, when are those guys going to run out of gas or have a problem or maybe get a caution flag and we can close it up a little bit? Mike Wallace on the left of your screen in the six car, and Ron Barfield driving for Ricky Craven in the New Holland Chevrolet car number two. Barfield will run the entire Craftsman Series 1998 in the trucks for Charles Hardy. Run 15 events for Ricky Craven, 12 Bush, and 3 Arca. 59 of 80 are complete, and Chad Coleman is our leader. Back in a moment. Hey! No, down here. Instead of running out for stamps, shouldn't you be running your business? Imagine a simpler way. Get the personal post office from Pitney Bowes. Send mail without ever going out for stamps. Just wait, punch in the postage, and voila! Professionally metered mail and no wasted postage. You can also add a personal message to get your mail noticed. And postage refills by phone in 30 seconds, day or night. Now listen up, because here's what you'll get. Besides a lot more time. You'll get the personal post office and money-saving electronic scale. So there's no wasted postage. For a 90-day free trial. Free is good. You'll also get the mail marketer software. Create really nifty direct mail to help your business grow. Call now for your 90-day free trial, and you'll also get our mail marketer software absolutely free. Now I'll watch your business grow. Hey, I look good in red. Call now and get all this for a 90-day free trial. The personal post office. Mailing made simple. Tough games in top conferences. First at 7.30, Luke Wrecker, Bosch Phenom, Chad Austin, Senior Sensation. A primetime rivalry in the Hoosier State. Then at 9.30, G.G. Smith sets him up. Pat Bradley knocks him down. A key SEC matchup in Athens. Indiana, Purdue at 7.30, Arkansas, Georgia at 9.30. Tuesday only on ESPN. The Bud One airship sails high above Daytona International Speedway in the crystal blue sky overhead. We appreciate the Bud One overhead shots helping cover the first plus financial 200 Arca Bondomar Hyde race currently underway. It's the biggest night in TV sports, and it's tomorrow night. It's the ESPYs, the sixth annual ESPY Awards. Pre-game starts at 7.30. The awards themselves begin at 8 o'clock. Presenters include Chris Rock, Alec Baldwin, Matt Damon, Robert Duvall, Michael J. Fox will learn about the best sports performers in 35 categories. That's tomorrow night here on ESPN, the 6th Annual ESPY Awards, beginning at 7.30 with the awards at 8 o'clock. Well, the ARCA race continues here, just a little less than 20 laps to go. Let's go back to the action in Dr. Jerry Punch. 
Thank you very much, Bob. Looking forward to those ESPYs tomorrow night. And it's getting, uh, they're getting clustered together toward the front. There's the car number 72 that was being shown as a leader. That is Chad Coleman out of Greenville, South Carolina, running right behind the Kirk Shelmerding car. And in turn two, we have the Kenny Irwin car, the Giacchetti car, Mike Wallace, as they try to work their way through traffic. There goes Kenny Irwin. And look at this heavy traffic in front of these cars. There's Jeff Finley on the outside, and Irwin goes by him. And, and Benny, Kenny Irwin is posted now in third place, but he's 19 seconds behind the leader. There's Gary Layton. And this is exactly the kind of experience Kenny Irwin needs, right, Benny? It sure is. And there we see Giacchetti on the outside as he tries to come through this traffic, and Mike Wallace was right beside of him. There we see Bob Strait. As Irwin has moved by Strait in the second spot, that black car on the outside is Bob Strait, who was running in second spot. So this group here is actually in turn two, and the leader is in the middle between turns three and four. There's about a half a lap separating Coleman from the second, third, fourth, and fifth place cars in this group right here coming down the backstretch. And here they are. There's, is that Wallace on the inside? Now it's Layton on the inside, Bob Strait in the middle, and the Mike Wallace is going to the high side to pass him. Gary Layton, the car number 74, and some contact. A couple of cars uh, getting together. That was uh, the 21 car straight. And Mike Wallace, the white car is Mike Wallace, and Wallace has now gotten in front of Barfi. The 74 car of Layton is a lap down. Ooh, it's almost in contact between Barfield and Layton. Quite a few cars racing right in this group that are not necessarily racing each other. They're just trying to get through this traffic. 15 laps to go. A half a lap separating the leader from the second place car of Kenny Irwin. The leader is a car number 72, Chad Coleman out of Greenville, South Carolina. Can he catch him in that amount of time, Benny? I mean, they've got to shave down to 18 and a half seconds now, but there's only 14 laps to go. We just have to catch him. Basically, Benny, we heard the concern over fuel, and you got to believe that this young man's smart enough or someone's told him exactly what he has to do to conserve fuel. Well, he's doing the right thing. He's standing behind Kirk Schomadine. He's drafting, saving all the fuel he can. Kyle Petty. Well, a minute ago, the 72 was going to try to stretch it all the way. These guys change pit strategy more than I change socks. I get at least three days out of a pair of socks. I stick with it that long. These guys get about 15 minutes out of pit strategy, and then they change. Now they're going to have to gas and go, or at least they're going to gas and go. They're not sure, so they want to be on the safe side. All right, 14 laps to go. We'll come back for the shootout here at Daytona International Speedway in the closing laps of the 35th annual First Plus Financial 200. Back in a moment. I know just about every garage in town. I guess I ought to know them all. More professionals use Napa parts than any other. That's because they can't afford to put in the same part twice. Just look at the signs. When did you see anything but we install Napa parts? Dan here liked us so much, he became a Napa Auto Care Center. <laughs> yep, everybody loves Napa. Of course, some say it's the hat. I think it's my good looks. We keep America running. Now on video, Tommy Spinelli is losing his luggage. You got my heads and I want them back. Losing his temper. Those are live human organs. Trust me, pal. They don't feel it. And looking for I heads. Heads are us. Eight heads in a duffel bag. See it tonight only on video. Also on video. For two out of control cops. The man in the car is DEA undercover. The best place to hide. We're gonna find the killer. He's behind a badge. We are the killers. Gang related. See it tonight only on video. You go use the woods out back.
Welcome back. The 72 car has decided to pit. They decided there was no need to change it. The boys get some experience down here. They're going to do one can of gas. They were going to end up about five or six laps short. So they're going to come in early. They're going up for the whole can. They didn't think they needed the whole can, but they went for the whole can. He's back out. Well, the young man from Greenville, South Carolina, got the lead at Daytona. Remember, he will forever keep in his early years as a stock car driver. He heads back onto the track. But Kenny Irwin, another youngster at 28 years of age, is now being shown as our leader in that car right there, the Ravestus Ford Thunderbird. And he has, he starts, he had a pretty good lead, but seconds going to speak too soon because Mike Jaquette is right behind him. And here's the battle as Thompson is they've been able to get by both Barfield and Bob Strait. Thompson's down fourth, Barfield fifth, Bob Strait's in sixth. Then we see Andy Hillenberg, he's a seventh place runner, and Frank Kimmel is in eighth. They gave him 10 laps to go that time by, so 10 to go here at Daytona. And this ARCA 200. And Barfield's going, by, I mean, Thompson is going by Mike Wallace to take over the third spot. Guys, we had talked a little earlier about Tim Steele not competing in 1998. So that really sets up a championship chase for the Arca Bond and Marheit series between Mark Thompson, Frank Kimmel, and Bob Strait. And all three of those guys are running in the top ten. This, this finish here at Daytona is very important. I'll tell you what, this 66 car is absolutely flying. The last time by, he was, and this time by, he was three miles per hour faster than the leader three miles per hour that's almost one second per lap mark thompson that's who benny's talking about this midway island ford that's the leaders right in front of him you're looking at his roof cam and mark thompson said daytona has been my achilles heel i've been here nine times i have finished this race just once and benny you're exactly right look how he's pulling these guys he's gaining on them well he starts getting that draft he's going to be even faster than these guys Jerry, his average finish here at Daytona, believe it or not, is 27.28. That's terrible. He can make up for that today. Here he's, he's right on the back bumper. He is there. Thompson is flying. And look as he try to come off his drivable and don't dive to the inside and get by Jacchetti. But Jacchetti goes down to block that move. And Kenny Irwin goes down to block that move. Now Jacchetti's going to try it on the outside. He passed him once Good before. Job. Good booster. That's what you need. That's a spotter talking to Kenny Irwin. And Mark Thompson trying to take over that second spot. He lost his momentum. Jaquetti goes back. And that's what Kenny Irwin wanted to see. These two guys running side by side to be able to give him some room to get away. Oh, Thompson loses it. Or did he? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That will make the highlight reels, folks. How in the world at 190 miles an hour do you save them when they're sideways? Whoa! What a great job of driving. Uh, Mark Thompson is a jet pilot. We're not talking about just a regular airplane. We're talking about a jet fighter pilot. But he had to knock up the nose piece. The front bumper had to hit the apron of the racetrack. He had to do some damage to that. That will hurt the handling of his race car. And now Mike Wallace has moved into second, and he's catching Kenny Irwin. It'll be six laps to go this time. Bob, take a look at the wild ride by Mark Thompson. Oh, just watch. It's unbelievable. How in the mm. world did he do that? Man, oh, man. Thompson, you are the man. Boy, what is, he, is he a hero or what? I'm telling you. What a job. Here's Kenny Irwin, seven to go. Make it six that time, Bob. Guys, I misspoke. I was wrong. Mike Wallace is in third. Mike Cicchetti still in second. There is Cicchetti in the car number 80, the Stan Hoover Motorsports Hughes Supply Ford. And that's a separation. I'm still impressed with Thompson's move. What an effort. We probably ought to mention that Kenny Irwin is being sponsored this race. This one-time deal is shipped by Rebestus, the brake people. The only sponsorship in 1998 will be this race today. And guys, Mike Cicchetti's best finish ever on a super speedway was fourth, and he's running second right now. If he's able to hold on to that, I'm sure he'll be happy with it. Speaking of holding on, here's Thompson trying to get a spot back after that near wild slide up there in turns three and four, trying to get seventh position back from Bob Strait in car number 21. 
couple of Joe Ryan engines running along there. The one in Bob Strait's car is the backup engine to number 66, Mark Thompson. And they're right on the back bumper of Ron Barfield. So that's a battle for sixth, seventh, and eighth. Less than five laps remaining here at Daytona. Kicking off the ARCA season, first of 23 events on this $3 million ARCA Bondo Marhide Series Tour. Thompson looks at the inside of straight. We'll have the momentum. Mm, this is about the spot the last time. Oh, he made it this time. But this time he had some air to lean on. Though. The other time he's trying to get by Giacchetti. He did not have that wall of air to lean on and just lost control. He's at the line. You see that uh, Kimmel in the 46 car was the fastest that time by. Mike Wallace second quickest and Hillenberg was third. Mark Thompson, how in the world? And look, here he's going by Ron Barfield as he comes off the second corner. So put Thompson up to the sixth spot. Back up front, Kenny Irwin is first and possibly his only ARCA event. ARCA doesn't allow you to stay to run if you're in the top 20 of the Winston Cup points. Robert Gates said, I hope this is our first and only ARCA event. Nothing against ARCA, but if we can have a good run here and then have a great run next Sunday, they total 500 and stay in the top 20 of the points, we won't be eligible for any more for the rest of the year. There's the first and second place car and the third place car. He's there, Mike Wallace, and all that borrowed stuff. And there we see Thompson and the two car. Hey, let's give a call to Frank Kimmel, too, running fourth right now. His best ever finish in seven starts here at Daytona is a sixth place, and he's in fourth right now and right on the bumper of Mike Wallace. And the last time by, both he and Wallace were faster than the first two cars. There's the 46 car of Kimmel, the advanced auto parts car. Battle for second spot. Wallace trying to take that second spot away from Giacchetti. And the 46 is saying, who do I go with? They're both Fords, so it's not a General Motors Ford thing. And Hillenberg's right on the bumper of the 46 car. This is really a race. That is second, third, fourth, and fifth all right together. And they're only about three car lengths back from the leader. With two laps to go here at Daytona. What a finish in ARCA competition. Never seen one, two, three, four. flag this time by Kenny Irwin right on the white line and here comes Wallace on the inside of Kenny. Wallace won this race back in 1994. He knows how to get to victory lane. Hillenberg a former winner too. Side by side for second spot. White flag waves. Irwin the leader. Odd spotters tell, tell them Kenny Irwin to go where they go meaning watch what Mike Wallace does. The veteran right behind you. There they are battling side by side for third. Chiquetti in the 80, Kimmel in the 46, Hillenberg behind him, last year's winner. That's third, fourth, and fifth together. A little bit of touch. They are half a lap away from checkered flag. Up ahead, the leaders, as you watch this battle side by side, the air buffeting these cars. Mike Wallace, the white car in front. Oh, and they spin. And Hillenberg was able to get by, and here they come. And Kenny Irwin will win the first plus financial 200. Mike Wallace finishes second. Hillenberg is third, and traffic coming by. Here comes Kimmel. And there's Brian Kahn sitting right in the middle of the racetrack where he spun. Hopefully, oh, and Giacchetti has knocked off an oil pump or something, and the flame under the car. Stop, Mike. Hit the brakes right now. He might not have any brakes. He's trying to get across the finish line. He's trying to get out of the car. It erupts in flames. You see, he hits the fire extinguisher. So he's trying to get across. And Chiquetti's still having trouble getting out of the car. The firemen are there and crewmen to help get him out of the car. And they are finally able to pull Mike Chiquetti free. 
He said, okay, I'm okay. Signaling okay. to the ARCA, ARC officials, I'm okay. And you see that yellow line right back there? That's the start-finish line, and he made it across there, so he will get a finish and not a DNF. And he is a very upset, a very hot young man, and not from the fire. As uh, Kenny Irwin has won the first plus financial 200, and Bill is standing by with his crew chief. Well, Mark Reno, congratulations. You sent the freshman to school today, and he did okay. Came out at the head of the class. Yeah, we had a great time, and it's wonderful for Kenny. Um, it's pretty exciting, I guess, to win your first race at Daytona. You know, with the first race, I looked over at Robert, and I said, well, we're not teaching him much except for leading. I said, we need to get him back in the pack and let him learn some stuff. And uh, we had to do a pit stop under the green. He did a good job there. And... Um, he did everything we told him to, and he learned a lot. Uh, we're pretty excited. What did you want him to learn today, Mark? We just wanted to learn uh, how to come in and out of the pits, uh, what to do around other cars. You know, just learn the draft, because this is his first race he's ever ever done where he's done any draft. And Looks like he did okay. Yeah, we're pretty happy. He can't do any much better than first. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Mark Reno helping there with Doug Yates and the David Blair Motors. But let's check in with Kyle Petty with Mike Cicchetti. I'm sitting here with Mike DeCate, drove a great race all day long. Put your car right exactly where it needed to be, and then with that, like, 200, 300 yards to go, it all goes to pieces on you. What happened? Well, uh, we were a little tight coming off when we got in a draft. I was better in front than I was, you know, following somebody, and we just got bogged down in the last two, three laps, and boys got a run on us, and Frank got underneath me, and uh, I don't know if he got a little bit loose or, or what. I know he didn't do it on purpose. Frank and I are good friends, and I, I thought I had it saved, but... You know, you're going 185 miles an hour, but hey, this is Daytona. This is the greatest sport in the world. You know, how can you beat being here? This is great. Get to talk to a guy like Kyle Petty. He's a beautiful man. I don't know about that, but they knew you were here today, man, and he'll be back. We can do what we did today in them 125s. We'll be in good shape. Uh, you know, we, we, got, we got a long, long way to go over there. Uh, I want to thank Hugh Supply and all their family of associates for helping. Uh, I know Benny got mad at me for saying everybody. I can't do that no more. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hey, we just appreciate the opportunity to be here at Daytona, the greatest speedway, run on Bill Francis' playground. We love him, too. Uh, hey, it don't get no better than this. We'll get him next time. Good job, man. Hey, Mike Chiquetti <laughs> climbing out of the car. I thought he was okay, but he called Kyle a beautiful man, so maybe you need to get Mike in and have him checked out a little bit there. There's <laughs> what's left of Mike Chiquetti's car. Now from the roof cam of the Advanced Auto Parts Chevrolet. Same thing that happened to Mark Thompson a while ago. You get on the inside, and you just, you don't have that wall of air to lean against you to come off that corner, and you just simply go around. But, and guys, you know, he didn't make any contact. That's what's important, and he's able to finish also. And, actually, if you look, he was able to limp across, as you watch from the gravy train roof cam of Andy Hillenberg. You see the car begin to wiggle a little bit. The rear of the car wiggles, and then suddenly it's up into the 80 car. Well, and and Hillenberg just barely missed both of those spinning cars. Unbelievable. And Kimmel was able to limp by and get a sixth place finish out of that. So he did come by to get a sixth place finish. Chiquetti will be credited with 13th uh, finishing in 13th finishing spot. Now we go down to our McDonald's winner circle where 28 year old Kenny Irwin is about to climb out for the first time at Daytona and celebrate. Not bad, Kenny. Well, Kenny Irwin climbs from his car onto the roof in victory lane in Daytona. Congratulations. Man, this is cool. This is my first race at Daytona. I mean, it's just Robert Yates, uh, around August 5th, hired me to drive his cars. And, I mean, it was it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And, uh, I mean, this is just all part of it. And to come down here and run so good. But, I mean, the goal is to run good in the Daytona 500 and the, the 125. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's the next thing at hand. But... Ray Bestis, Texaco, I mean, they, they put this car together so we could run this week, and um, I mean, it's just great. It all began, the Twins and the Daytona 500 in this race, though. You needed some drafting experience. Exactly, and, and that was the only reason we run this race, is uh, me and Robert talked about, you know, what we should run, and uh, the ARCA race seemed to be, you know, the thing to do, and I definitely got some experience today. Um, I mean, it, the car run great, and uh, I, I think they're called uh, Yates Rockets or something, and they were, they were awesome today. Can you tell us what you know now that you didn't know 80 laps ago, Kenny? Well, just, I mean, I guess just being out there, you, you just realize what 
you know, what it does in the draft and how cars can get by you. I seen the 90 car, 80 car, whatever it was, and uh, I mean, he got by me a couple times just for the fact that I didn't really know what to do. And um, it was just, I mean, there at the end, I, I kind of figured out some stuff that I needed to do. You certainly know how to lead at a restrictor plate race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. I thought, you know, I'm thinking we just, we just got to keep it under control and uh, we'll be all right. But just now we got to go to the 125s. Okay, we'll see you there. Best Thanks. of luck and congratulations. All right, Kenny Irvin becomes the 28th different driver to win the ARCA 200. Today he led two times for a total of 41 laps. So the young man indeed got some very valuable experience driving that Robert Yates Robestos rocket. Back with more in a moment. In our quest for the finest brakes in the world, we tested our pads against other leading brands. With pad after pad, in test after test, the results were always the same. No other brand stopped shorter than Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. The ones we stock at AutoZone. I wish my parents could be here to see me win, but I know that's not possible because it's lunch. And right now, get two Big Macs for just $2. Did somebody say McDonald's? Proud to feed the world's Olympic athletes. NASCAR 98. I'm in a groove with new scuffs. Talk fast. Are fans that loyal to their driver sponsor? Uh, Nate. What? NASCAR 98, the ultimate judge. EA Sports. It's in the game. Back at Daytona Beach, Florida, Daytona International Speedway, our ongoing coverage of Speed Weeks 1998. What a day. What an incredible day. Beautiful weather, huge crowd, and what a race. And a wild finish we had as we check in once again in the Arca Garage with Kyle Petty. Well, I'm here at the gas pump with Mark Thompson, and, and we're showing a shot of your car here with the, with the, uh, with the front valence pinned under. And, and I was in the pit, so I didn't get to see it on TV. But Benny and those guys say, being a, being a, a jet pilot, you got a little bit out of formation there. What exactly was up with that? Yeah, we got a little bit low on the formation. Tried to uh, go through uh, turn four on the flat. Well, maybe on the corner of half banked, half flat, and turn the turn the air dam down. They told me, they said, now, when you get home to see this on TV, that I'm not going to believe it. So it must have been pretty incredible because it takes a lot for me not to believe this stuff. But your car worked great all day long. Like you said, you're about the first finishing ARCA guy out here right now. These other guys drive cup cars and stuff like that, so you've got to be proud of that. Well, you know, Daytona has always been sort of a jinx track for us. So uh, we're, we're extremely happy with the fourth down here. We'd have liked to have won, but considering the turn we took down there and, you know, about four, five, six laps from the end. I'm glad to be sitting here with a car at the at the pumps drinking Gatorade, you know? He's sitting here, and he'll be ready for the rest of the season. This is a great start. And I want to say hey to my dad at home. I know he's watching this thing. He's been sick lately, so hey, Dad. He probably woke him up with that little out-of-formation thing. He probably did. <laughs> I guarantee you. And, folks, if you missed it, we're going to show it to you again. This is a remarkable save at 185 miles per hour. Take a look. That's Thompson, the black 66 on the inside of Giacchetti. He loses that wall of air to lean against him. Watch this, folks. Watch this. He's crashed. He's going to back it in the fence, but he saves it and continues on and finishes fourth. I tell you, as lucky as that guy is, he's leaving here to go find Amelia Earhart. As lucky as he is, he'll find her. I hope to tell you. <laughs> okay, from, from his own roof camp. Wow, wow. Just part of the wild scramble we had this afternoon, which was the first plus financial 200. Back with more post-race reaction in a moment. National Car Rental, we believe that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. Because at most major airports in America, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental.
now there's a tire that can survive even this, the Goodyear Eagle F1 Run Flat. Even with no air pressure, Goodyear Run Flat technology lets you drive up to 50 miles at 55 miles per hour so you can drive to safety. Eagle F1 Run Flat. Serious freedom. Only from Goodyear. Goodyear, Goodyear. We don't exactly know who will be presenting at this year's ESPYs. Oh, well, that's a problem, right? Oh, not at all. We have a sample of your voice we can digitally reproduce. Really? Wow, okay. Hi, I'm Norm MacDonald. Please join me in a star-studded array of celebrities such as... Tyra Banks, Mayor Rudy Giuliani, Barry Sanders, Dean Smith, Ken Griffey Jr. Man, that's technology. That's what that is. The ESPYs, presented by General Motors and Pennzoil, tomorrow at 8. Certainly a special night tomorrow night for the ESPY Awards, and we've got a special year coming your way, the 50th anniversary of NASCAR. An incredible year coming up, including uh, what is going to be a very, very special on May the 2nd. There is the 50, NASCAR's 50th year of victory, coming up 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. That's, and the, the, that's the fifth in a series. And, folks, the first four have been terrific. This is the last one. You want to see it on Friday. And they have all been absolutely outstanding. And, of course, coming up May the 2nd, ESPN uh, and NASCAR's 50th anniversary Hollywood celebration from Hollywood, California. Benny's going to Hollywood. Oh, baby. Stay away from Rodeo Drive. Let's go down to, speaking of Hollywood, let's go down to Kyle Petty. <laughs> well, I'm standing here with Mike Wallace, and... His brother walks up, his one brother walks off, Kenny walks off, and about the time Kenny walks off, Rusty walks up. You know, you had a great run today, and I gotta say, the Wallace family had a great one. First and second in the Bud Shootout, then you come in here and kick the rear end in this race. I think, I don't think this is gonna be like Bud Shootout Day or Arca Day anymore at Daytona. I think we're gonna call us Wallace Day at Daytona from now on. That's perfect, Kyle. I mean, I'm so happy for Rusty and Kenny running so good in the Bud Shootout, but I'm as happy for our crew, because I'll tell you what, three weeks ago, we didn't even have a race car. Rusty's team, Michael Craniff, I'd like to thank Michael and Paul Andrews a bunch. They loaned me two cars, a couple motors, all the wheels, borrowed some headers from him, intake and carburetor from Yates. So we pieced it all together and run second. I need you to be, be in charge of all my stuff for next year, as bad as I'm running right now. I need you to piece some stuff together. But, you know, you, it came down to the end. You guys were drafting. He's out in front. You know, you got to hope that somebody hooks up with you, and you just never could get hooked up with anybody. Well, uh, you know, fortunately, uh, Andy Hillenberg and Ron were right there, and Kim will give me a little shot at the end and kind of weasel my way through down there and won. And uh, those guys got to racing side by side, made it a little easier at the end. But, you know, you stop and think about it. A three-week effort against a Yates car is not a bad deal. And uh, now all I need is a good cup car. Maybe I can borrow one from him. We can go over <laughs> second round, run 500. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, Carla and the kids didn't get to come down. They're playing with the horses. And uh, I told her we were going to win, but we run second. And you can't complain about that at this point in time. But let me tell you something. You had a great run down here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you've served notice that Rusty Wallace is back at Daytona. You know what I mean? You've had some bad luck down here. You've been on your roof a couple of times down the backstretch and stuff. So I think you, you served notice, and I think the four teams served notice that the cars will run in the draft anyhow. Well, I think they drafted really well today. Last night's practice, everything looked good, and today it worked, it worked really, really good. But, I mean, that was a real shootout today. A lot of things happened. You know, I was in the back, I was in the front, I was in the back, I was in the front. Pit stops were great. Everything worked out good, and when that last lap, I mean, we had a roll, and uh, all hell was breaking loose, and it turned out pretty good. I think you made Jeff so mad, he just quit there at the end. So, <laughs> Bill Weber, I'm going to throw it to you from Wallace Central up here. Well, I'm uh, here following the Venturini adventure, which has ended successfully. We began on Wednesday. Billy Venturini had never raced here before, never turned a lap, but... Uh, it came out okay ninth today. Congratulations. Uh, it, was, it wasn't bad. We're real happy with that. You know, uh, was hoping to, to maybe have a little better run, but both uh, both the crew chief and the driver made one error. <laughs> so that, that's the difference between winning and ninth, especially today. It was a real good race, you know. Uh, I need to thank a lot of people like Simon Eyes, Hankel, Loctite. Uh, Dana Corporation was on the car too also just for this race, and hopefully we can sign a deal so we can uh, buy Atlanta so we can run a whole season with them as our sponsor. Walk us through the driver, Miss Q. <laughs> we all come down Pitt Road, and uh, someone checked up. We, we all were braking, and someone checked up just a little bit extra. I hit the brakes a little harder, and the thing just came out coming down Pitt Road. Uh, I, I spun through the grass. We got it going. You know, and we got back in the draft with Mark and uh, Belmont, but... Uh, you know, Mark was pretty quick, and, and, and we were quick, but, but you know, the rest of the people in the car in that draft weren't uh, as quick as the leaders. Leaders pulled away from us, and then, uh, you know, we didn't get the caution we needed. We get the caution, maybe we get top three, top four, whatever, but uh, we're still, we're happy with the top ten, never running here before. 
Okay, let's find out what the teacher thinks. Bill, come on in here. By the way, word from your pit is that you're much more excitable than your son. Oh, during... I'm terribly excitable. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to. He did a good job. I want to thank everybody. Uh, I got to. I got to introduce this guy, Ace Kohler. He's been with us this year, the last year and this year. He's running the operation with us for the short track program and helping me with the speedway program. This is a total team effort. I'm, I'm so proud of everybody. The kid did a good job. What's the most important thing he learned, Bill? Oh, he went to school today. No doubt about it. He learned what drafter was about. He knew what it was to get to get uh, hung out to dry, so to speak, and he learned what it was like to suck up with somebody, you know, when you get pulled in with the draft. Um, saved me a lot of work. Brought it home in one piece. Uh, we'll be ready for Talladega. Well, thank you both for a great week, and congratulations, Bill and Billy, on a great run. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. And following up on the other second-generation driver, Adam Larson from Ames, Iowa, started back in 33rd position, brought it home, two laps down in 25th, and it's exactly what his dad wanted him to do. He said, just finish the race, young man, and you'll get plenty of experience, and there'll be a lot of time down the road to get those top 10 finishes. Back with more post-race reaction in just a moment. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and this is Craftsman Innovation at its best. Craftsman RoboGrip pliers are the world's first self-adjusting one-handed pliers. With just a simple squeeze of the spring-loaded handle, the jaws automatically adjust. The Craftsman RoboGrip works on faucets and hoses, or for auto repairs. It has hundreds of household uses. And because Craftsman RoboGrip pliers are from Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. Call the number on your screen right now to order your Craftsman RoboGrip. We got us a piece of the frontier for eight bucks. We'll be I sold 99 cents for $12. At Ameritrade, we never forget it's your money. So your trades are fast and accurate. By internet for $8, touchtone phone for $12, or with a broker for $18. I landed on Saturn for $18. Check out Ameritrade.com or call 1-800-592-1947. Open any account by April 15th and get a free IRA for life. Ameritrade, the way to trade, period. The Senior Tour rolls on as King of the Course Arnold Palmer makes his triumphant return to Naples. But defending champ Hale Irwin looks to spoil the show. Legends clash in the LG Championship. Coverage continues today at 5.30 on ESPN. I'm Dale Jarrett. I'm Jeff Gordon. And I'm Dale Earnhardt. We're here at Daytona USA. Cool attraction, huh? Yeah, nothing beats this. You're not leading. I could squeeze through there. Oh, he's such a kid. Let's go, the movie star. That's a fella, huh? I just want to live with him. What do you need? I don't know. Come on, get to this room. Trying to hog up the room. Back in Daytona, our unofficial results. If you're scoring at home, Kenny Irwin got some valuable experience. Mike Wallace drove his tail off in a lot of barred equipment, finishing second. Andy Hillenberg dodged two spinning bullets on the last lap. Mark Thompson kept it from going sideways and up in the air at 185 miles an hour. And Ron Barfield finished fifth, and Benny, I'm out of breath. And look look where Mike Wallace started. And Andy Hillenberg, 18th and 11th. And Bob Strait started 36th, finished seventh. 17 cars finishing on the lead lap and the young man from Greenville Coleman Chad Coleman finishing in 17th spot what a thrill that had to been for him today guys he was out front in the Daytona Arca 200 and you saw Adam Larson back in 25th position two laps down the young man from Ames Iowa so they'll be celebrating out in cyclone country out in Iowa State Territory where his family lives We'll show you the last lap fireworks once again as they were battling side by side in turn four. Frank Kimmel, 46, Mike Giacchetti in the 80 car. This was a battle for third spot. Kimmel gets out of shape, gets in the side of the 80 car, and Andy Hillenberg, the 95, just misses 46. Now, just misses the 80, comes home in third place. And remember, they're coming down to take the checkered flag. All right, we'll ride along with him and see what it looked like to be running with Frank Kimmel. All right, now let's see who saw it this way from possibly the gravy train roof cab of Andy Hillenberg. And folks, you wonder why that they use restrictor plates at Daytona, why they only run 185 miles per hour? Just imagine what they would do running to 205, 210 miles per hour doing that. All right, let's check in in the pits with Kyle Petty, who's with our fifth place finisher, Ron Barfield. 
Well, Ron, I, I watched ARCA qualify another day, and when you qualified, you said, okay, we knew we weren't going to be really fast, but we knew we were going to race really good. And you were right in the middle of it all day long. Come home with a fifth-place finish. You got a bush car coming in the, tonight. You start bush practice tomorrow. What a way to start off speed weeks down here. Well, I tell you, you know, New Holland Chevrolet, it's Chevrolet this year, and, uh, you know, it run real good and all weekend long, but the, we couldn't get qualified real, real fast, but this thing started racing real good, and car got tight on me late in the day there. I mean, it just started getting tight up off the corner. I was having to lift up off the corner, and, there were me and Mike Wallace were headed out there in front of the field. I said, man, this is good here, but I just couldn't run quick enough up off the corner to, to make ground up. But, uh, you know, Vic Kankis and the guys done an excellent job here. And, um, you know, one thing I got to say is, um, you know, I got to thank New Holland. New Holland stuck with me this year and uh, laid all the cards on the table. And, um, you know, I want to thank all the dealers and all the supporters there for staying with me. I tell you what, got a new sponsor driving for Ricky Craven on the bush. He's ready for next week to come around. All right, indeed. Ronnie Barfield will run 15 events for Ricky Craven in 1998. When we come back, we'll check in on what was an emotional story we began today with. The story of Sturgis, Kentucky driver Bill Baird, who came back after being at his mom's bedside last night. In our quest for the finest brakes in the world, we tested our pads against other leading brands. With pad after pad, in test after test, the results were always the same. No other brand stopped shorter than Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. The ones we stock at AutoZone. When it comes to choosing the right motor oil, let's make something perfectly clear. Introducing three new oils from Quaker State, specially formulated for the vehicle you drive. Synthetic blends for hard-working engines and high-horsepower engines. A full synthetic for ultimate engine protection. Extra filtered with patented Micro-Q filtration to ensure your oil starts clean for a difference you can see and trust. So when it comes to protecting your vehicle, why take a chance? Quaker State. The choice is clear. I prefer child caregiver, Jimmy. I prefer Zoltron. Okay. So, Zoltron, I see you had a pizza delivered. Afraid not. Sure looks likely to me. You call Zoltron a liar? Look, space boy. Here on Earth, if it looks like delivery, chances are. It's DiGiorno. The self-rising crust pizza that bakes up fresh like pizzeria pizza. For fresh baked pizza at home, Cute. it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. For speed world coverage of the 35th running of the First Plus Financial 200 from Daytona International Speedway has been brought to you by the more than 1,750 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Quaker State, the quality your car deserves. We told you at the beginning of the day that our pole sitter, Bill Baird, had had that felt all the emotions a human being could feel from the joy of victory and sitting on the pole to the bottom of the emotional drain of being at the bedside of a loved one what a difficult two days for bill baird let's update his story with bill weber well jerry bill baird definitely racing under extremely difficult decision uh conditions here at daytona first of all uh on the track i, I know you're disappointed with the way the day came out yeah you know we had a whole lot better car where we finished that bill we uh Picked up a push uh, early in the race and uh, had to run down the bottom. And I think lap 42, 43, we come in there on green and uh, took on two right side tires and that helped to push out some, but we didn't get full of gas. And uh, so we had to make one more pit stop at the end and uh, never got a caution today. I mean, you know, a good clean ARCA race uh, had to be good for the fans and everything. We just need a caution bad and uh, two thirds way through the race. And I think we would have been a contender, but that's. It was what is the difference between 22nd and 1st. Your family encouraged you to race here today, Bill. Yeah, you know, I give it a lot of thought night before last and um, talked to my sister and my um, wife and everybody around and uh, said come back down here because it's where mom was supposed to be at today. And, uh, you know, uh, hey, uh, we made it through the race okay. Uh, got the uh, cars all in one piece down. We think it's got a scratch on it. And uh, we'll go home, get ready for Atlanta, and hopefully get another pole down there. We got a win coming. Uh, this just wasn't our day. Okay. Well, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Uh, 
throughout all this. Yeah, Bill, and you know, I want to thank, uh, man, there's been such an outpouring towards to me and my wife and my family, and, and we thank everybody for it. And uh, just uh, everybody out there, you know, has got a mom, uh, give them a kiss, tell them you love them because uh, it might not be there tomorrow. Thank you. And uh, we'd also like to say hello to your mom, Jerry, Betty Jo Punch in the hospital in Hickory, North Carolina. Betty Jo, we're here in Daytona thinking about you. Thank you very much, Ben. It's been a very difficult uh, month for us uh, having my mom in the hospital, but we can certainly all sympathize with uh, the efforts of what would happen with Bill Baird. And as Bill put it, don't ever forget to tell the people you love how you feel before you go to bed at night. Back with more in a moment. For a limited time, get two McDonald's Big Macs for just two dollars. There's nothing in the world that I won't do. Do what I have to do just to get to you. Get to Mickey D's and get two beefy Big Macs or two morning fresh sausage McMuffins with egg for just two dollars. Two Big Macs, please. For here or to go, sir. Did somebody say McDonald's? Proud to feed the world's Olympic athletes. When it comes to choosing the right motor oil, let's make something perfectly clear. Introducing three new oils from Quaker State, specially formulated for the vehicle you drive. Synthetic blends for hard-working engines and high-horsepower engines. A full synthetic for ultimate engine protection. Extra filtered with patented Micro-Q filtration to ensure your oil starts clean for a difference you can see and trust. So when it comes to protecting your vehicle, why take a chance? Quaker State, the choice is clear. Back at Daytona International Speedway, the great crowd on hand, and what a show they saw today. The Bud Shootout qualifier, the Bud Shootout, and what a wild scramble here in this ARCA 200. As Kyle Pitt has caught up with another top five finisher. Kyle? Well, the last of the top five finishers, Andy Hillenberg. I caught up with him. You won this race before. You put your car in a position towards the end of the race to win the thing. But it seems like you guys just couldn't get hooked up enough to run down the 27 a car. And when you did, somebody would pull out on somebody and you'd get too wide again. Pretty much that's, uh, that's exactly how it happened, Kyle. I mean, I thought we could make a run there at the end. Then we caught a bunch of lap cars and narrowed the racetrack up for us a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm real proud of our car and the way it ran and uh, happy to be back here. You know, it's a little disappointing after winning, but, I mean, third place, hey, uh, you're not going to win them all. And if you can run uh, third all, all the time, that's actually a pretty good race car driver so and team. And I'll, uh, I'll try to come back someday with a gravy train car and win another one. Well, I tell you what, you run great today, and I know you're looking forward to that 95 car sitting over in the other garage running the, the Winston Cup stuff. Yeah, I am. I don't think we're quite as uh, good as that, but uh, uh, we'll try our best and uh, race our heart out. And uh, we was out there doing it today. We got up there early. As long as I had a lot of cars around and uh, the buffeting, uh, I could get through traffic pretty good. But when we started weeding some of those guys out on the tail end of it, uh, I just couldn't quite make the moves that I was making in the first part of the race. And uh, it was fun. I mean, 80 laps, being aggressive. Uh, that's how I like to race here, and uh, we had a good time. We'll take our third-place car and go home. I'd like to uh, say hey to all my little ABCs at home and uh, uh, thank Gravy Train for being here. His week's not over. You'll hear more from Andy before the weeks. All right, Andy Hillenberg finishing in third spot. Our final re official results again. You see Kenny Irwin, Wallace, Hillenberg, Thompson, and Barfield in the top five. Mike Giacchetti, after that spin, would finish in 13th spot. No consecutive winners here at Daytona in the ARCA First Plus Financial 200. And once again, that tradition will hold up. Andy Hillenberg won last year, didn't win this year. All right, 40 cars started. What was the richest race in ARCA Series history? But our Speedways coverage continues for 1998. Tomorrow, we've got NASCAR Bush Series cars. We've got NASCAR Winston Cup second round qualifying. And we're going to say hello to the NASCAR Goodies Dash Series machine. It has been motorsports madness here at Daytona, but that's a good thing. But wait a minute, the shootout's over, the Yorker race is over, but that's not the end, that's just the beginning. These cars and rigs are clearing out. There are bush rigs parked about 100 yards out there. They'll be pulling in here along with the goodies dash cars. They hit the track tomorrow. It's another full week as this motorsports marathon continues. And you stay right with us and we'll bring it all home to you. You don't have to get up, Kyle.
I tell you what, today with the Bud Shootout, with the qualifying race, with the ARCA race, I think we saw a great start to Speed Weeks down here. We saw some great driving, some of the greatest driving we've ever seen in the ARCA race, the fewest amount of incidents that I remember in recent years. We saw some great side-by-side 20-car -side trains in the, in the Bush stuff, or in the Bud Shootout stuff, and I think that's what we're going to continue to see in the Dash Series, in the Bush Series, and in the Winston Cup for next week for the 500. Thanks a lot, guys. Great job in the pits today for Bill Weber and Kyle Penn. Take a look at our, our lineup tomorrow. 11 a.m. Bush Grand National Practice. 1 o'clock NASCAR Winston Cup qualifying round two. And at 3 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to say howdy to the Goodies Dash Series subcompact sedans. And don't forget about RPM tonight coming up. The Bud Shootout wrap-up ARCA highlights Speed Week's news at 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight. And we're halfway through our 50 hours of coverage of Speed Weeks 1998. Coming up next is Shop Talk for Kyle Petty, Bill Weber, Ray Dunlap, and Benny Parsons. I'm Jerry Putz congratulating that young man right there, 28-year-old Kenny Irwin, as he's the winner of the First Plus Financial 200. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long, everyone, from Daytona Beach, Florida. Welcome to Petty Enterprises 2, just outside of Concord, North Carolina, home of the Hot Wheels racing team and home today of NASCAR Shop Talk. Glad that you could join us. I'm Alan Bestwick. Today we delve into more of the 50th anniversary celebration of NASCAR by talking about one of racing's first families with one of its prominent members, Kyle Petty, our guest. We'll spend the next 30 minutes chatting about his family's long history in the sport. And, of course, along the way, got a lot of great 50th anniversary of NASCAR merchandise to show you as well. In fact, let's start with that right now. Thanks, Alan.